Hi everyone and welcome back to another video of Architects 3D Printing. This is the third episode of the Cura Custom Settings series. In the last episodes, we analyzed the quality and shield tabs in the Cura Custom Settings menu. In case you missed those videos, I strongly recommend you to watch them clicking right here in the top right corner or while well in the link in the description. In this episode, we are going to analyze the third tab that will be the infill menu. To play with the settings, we are going to use the test cube that we created in the first episode. So we will experiment the changes in this small object, what will result in a fast print. I am going to upload the files of this test cube that we created, both in STL and 3DM formats, to a post in our Patreon page, so you can download them and you will find this post linked down in the description. Ok, so to start, as I said before, I'm going to import in Cura our test cube, dragging it into the canvas and we will change the view to layer view. Since we won't see the infill from the exterior, we are going to move the layer analyzer from the top layer, that is the number 101, to the layer number 50. Actually, to have a better look at the infill in the analyzer, since the object is only 20 by 20 millimeters, I'm going to scale it at 400%, so now it will measure 80 by 80 by 80. And one more time we will move the layer to the number 200. I don't know why it is happening but the software has a bug in the Mac version and the names in the menu sometimes are difficult to read. Anyways, I will read them and I'm sure you will understand them with a bit of imagination. Now that we have everything ready to go, we are going to open the infill tab in the custom settings menu. By default, we will find three or less options. In our case, we have the infill density, the infill pattern, and finally the gradual infill steps. Infill density, the first option, is very basic. It changes the density of the infill in our 3D model. We will usually use an infill from 15 to 25% depending on every case, but those are pretty decent values. If we are going to print an structural piece for a machine, it's better to give it more density, but for regular prints that won't be functional, 15 to 25 is more than enough. Changing this value will have a direct impact in the printing time, as well as in the weight of the object. For example, if we use an infill of 15%, it will be almost 5 hours printing the infill and the test cube will weigh 114 grams. Using a 50%, the infill will take 16 hours and 20 minutes and the object will weigh 288 grams, but with the advantage to be more rigid and resistant. We will let the 15% infill activate it and we are going to explore the next option, the infill pattern. By default the grid is activated, but we're gonna see the different options that we can choose from. If we choose lines, it will look the same, but instead of printing in both directions every layer, it will print the infill alternating the direction of the lines in every layer. Notice that since it's controlled by the percentage of infill, this time the density of the lines will be the double since the amount of plastic in the layer has to be the same than before. If we want to use this option to have the same patterns than using a grid but with half of the lines, we will have to play with the percentages. Let's make a quick comparison. Look at the pattern here in the lines mode. If we go to grid, the squares are twice as big. So if we go back to lines and change the infill percentage to half, that will be around 8%, the pattern will look like the one we used before and we will reduce the weight and printing time of the object drastically. So we reduce the printing time of the infill from almost 5 hours to 2.5 and, and we also reduce the weight of the objects from 114 grams to only 79. The rigidity of the object won't be the same, but will be quite similar. And the only bad part of it comes in the very top layer, since it's always better for the top layers to have more surface where to lay in. We are going to set the percentage back to 15% and we are going to continue with the next pattern, triangles. That will do basically the same than the grid, but using triangles instead of squares. The next option will create a mesh mixing triangles and hexagons and offering an improved rigidity compared with the regular grid. Next, we will find cubic, a three-dimensional mesh that will provide even more rigidity than before, and cubic subdivision that will play with the density of the infill, increasing the size of the cubes when it's possible. This method will reduce the printing times considerably, in this case, almost one and a half hour, without losing rigidity. Then we'll find octet, that will do the same than cubic, but using octahedrons instead of cubes, and quarter cubic, another cool pattern. 
Next, we will find concentric and concentric 3D. That what we will basically do is to create an offset of the external perimeter walls to the interior and we'll also connect them diagonally if we use the 3D option. The next option is zigzag. It will create a mesh similar to the lines option, but this time printing a unique line from the start till the end in every single layer, as we saw in the shell episode. And finally we can find cross and cross 3D, that will create a cool pattern with crosses and connecting them in 3D in the case of the second option. I personally like this option in prints where you are going to use transparent or translucent materials because it will make a cool effect in your finish, as you can see in this print I did a long time ago of this frog from Thingiverse. The next option we have activated is gradual infield steps, that currently is set to zero. This number controls the number of different infield percentages that it will make in the object, depending on the needs for the print. For example, if we use 5 steps instead of 0, as we can see, it will change the density depending on the high. If we use more than one step, it's recommended to use a higher infill density, for example, 90%. Now, as you can see, the infill in the very top is very dense, but almost the whole cube is hollow. We will reduce the printing time and the weight of the object, but we will also lose some rigidity. Personally, I don't recommend to use this option in regular objects like this one, but it could be good if we print some figurines or other very irregular objects. In these cases where the rigidity is not a must, we will gain a reduction of the printing times. I'm going to set this value to 0 and the infill density back to 15% to continue with the settings. As always, now we are going to click in the setup wheel in the infill tab, which will open the settings visibility menu. The first option will allow you to use different extruders for the infill in case you have a printer with multiple extruders, what is not our case. Next we will find infill line distance, a substitute for the percentage to control the infill of the objects. This way, if we want to change from grid to lines as we did before, if we change the percentage we have to mentally calculate it from 15 to 8% to have more or less the same pattern. But with this option, for example, if we manually set the distance to 5 mm between lines, now if we change the pattern to lines, it will keep exactly the same pattern, alternating the directions of it in every layer. Personally, since I used to select a pattern depending on every object I print, I'm going to reset this value and disactivate it from the menu. The next option we find is Connect Infill Lines. It is only used on infills such as Cross or Cross 3D. We are going to hide these settings since we are not going to use it normally. Next, we can find line directions, what will allow us to rotate the direction of the lines as we saw in the top and bottom shells. Then infill X and Y offsets, what will allow us to move the whole pattern in the X or Y axis. Rarely we will have to use these options. And then we find cubic subdivision shell. This option, what basically do is to increase the density of the subdivisions next to the external walls when we are using the cubic subdivision infill pattern. One more time, we'll keep it disactivated since we are not going to use it. Next, we'll find infill overlap percentage, a setting that we are going to activate since it can be very useful in some cases. What it will basically do is to overlap the inner wall by a percentage of the infill line width. By default, it's set to 10% but I am going to increase it to 15% since sometimes I am experimenting separation in between the infill and the walls. Next, we have a sub option to control it with millimeters instead of percentage, as we saw before with the infill density, and I am not going to activate it. Then the skin overlap percentage does the same but with the external skin. I am not going to activate it either, and the next option we can find is infill wipe distance. This option will move the extruder over the wall, as we saw with the infill overlap, but this time without extra extrusion, just moving the nozzle over the wall to help the infill stick to the walls. I'm going to disable it, since it has no much sense to have the overlap and wipe options activated at the same time, but it is a cool option that you can let activate it if you want. Next we have infill layer thickness, what will obviously allow us to control the layer thickness of the infill. I normally use the same layer thickness for everything, 
so I'm not going to activate it, but you can play with it. Next, we'll find Gradual Infill Steps, the option that we explained before and the sub option to control it with millimeters. After that, we will find Infill Before Walls. If we show this option, we will see that by default it's activated. I recommend you not to change it, since it will provide better results in the external faces. That is what we are going to see. Since I'm not going to change it, I'm going to hide this option and we are going to continue and show the minimum infill areas. This option will allow us to choose the minimum area in square millimeters where the infill will be used. If this area is smaller than the number we set, it will use skin instead, making a solid infill. To show you how it works, I'm gonna use the nice 3D model Area Dragon that you can find on Thingiverse. If we show this option, we can now go down in the layers to the ones that are more or less around the neck of the dragon where it's more narrow. Since it is set to zero, it means it's disabled. If for example we write 40 square millimeters, let's see what happens. Whoops! Now the neck infill is set to 100% just the portion where the surface is smaller than 40 square millimeters. If we set it to 35, now this portion is smaller. Personally, I like to use this option and I recommend you to do the same. Setting the minimum area around 15 square millimeters, it will add more strength to the thin parts such as the legs of the dragon, what will make them more resistant to break by accident. Finally, we find skin removal width and its sub options. Skin expand distance and its sub options for the top and bottom skins, and the maximum skin angle for expansion with a sub option for minimum skin width for expansion. These last options are made to limit the amount of material used in the print by reducing the use of the skin. We are not going to use it for now since printing objects basically in a maximum size of 20 by 20 by 20 does not use to require printing times of several days, and it doesn't really matter to make the print finish, for example 20 minutes earlier in a big print. Ok, so guys, that was everything for this video about the infill tab in Cura custom settings. As a final summary, if we have a look at the final settings that we let activated, we will find infill density that we will normally set in between 15 and 25%, then infill pattern which we will normally set to grid and in rare occasions we'll change it the infill overlap percentage that we increased from 10 to 15 percent to give a better addition in between the walls and the infill the gradual infill steps that we will use normally for big and irregular prints and finally the minimum infill area that we activated to 15 square millimeters and we won't normally change as you have seen, the infill is not a very complicated tab and we can mainly control everything using only 5 parameters. To finish, what I'm gonna do is to make a test print of the test cube that we created in the first episode, but this time we're gonna use this very cool transparent filament that we recently bought. For the print, we are going to scale it back to 100%, set an infill density of 20%, and we will also change the infill pattern to cubic. I will let you now with a time lapse of the print. As you can see, here we got an amazing result and with this cool filament we are able to see the pattern in the interior, what makes the cube look so cool. Now what I would recommend you is to start playing with the settings we analyzed today with your 3D printer. And if you enjoyed and learned with the video, please hit the like button, share the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel, clicking here in this little icon that you will find in the bottom right corner. To stay tuned for future videos, you can also follow us on Twitter or Instagram at architects3dp. If you want to support the channel, you can also consider to support us on Patreon from only $1 per month, what will make us extremely happy and also will give you some nice rewards that you can check in our Patreon page 
navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp or clicking in the link in the description. Okay, so as always, see you guys in the next video.